How to name my personal brand. Today we're answering the question on every entrepreneur's mind. How should I name my new brand? Should you name it after yourself? Should you choose an umbrella name? A name not related to your personal identity at all? This is the question we're going to answer in this episode of Inspiration of Millions today. This is an extremely important decision because it's the name you choose will be the first point of recognition, of familiarity between you and your ideal individuals. I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each option and three compelling reasons why you might want to go one way or the other. And stick around to the end because I'm going to give you an amazing tool that will help you evaluate the merits of the names you shortlist and pick the one that evokes the right kind of emotions in your ideal individuals because all buying decisions are, at their very crux, emotional. The naming of a new brand is the question all entrepreneurs face in the very beginning of their journey. And I always say, great names work for you 24-7 and bad names work against you 24-7. They create that first impression and instinctively evoke an emotion. Emotion is the driver of all purchases. So if you think about it, you're always branding to emotion, naming towards inspiring an emotion. Some of the most coveted brands of the world, like Mrs. Fields Cookies, Martha Stewart, Calvin Klein, are all names of people. But then Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google are some of the biggest and most successful brands in the world, and those aren't named after people. Which way should you go? Let's go through the pros and cons of naming your personal brand. The first question is always, is it easier to build a personal name brand or create a name brand? It's equal. The work is the work is the work. It takes about the same amount of work and time to create these two different types of brands. The difference is in the benefits of these two options, not the ease of doing it. If you're a celebrity, yeah, there's that instant recognition and identification and even a sense of belonging if you name it after yourself. But then you are accountable for absolutely everything in your life and everybody hard to do as a celebrity. <laughs> parents included, meaning your parents included. You're responsible for what they did and your circle of friends. As you can imagine, the pressure mounts. Everything you do and your brand does reflects on each other and everything associated with that brand. Living in Hollywood for so long is why I can talk about it. There's just one thing that I know for certain because I hear it from so many people or my friends. Once you are truly famous, you really can't get unfamous. You can't unfamous yourself. <laughs> Even if you become a recluse, your celebrity could rise. It's up to the audience to decide if they want to stop watching you or not. Now, with the umbrella brand, you don't have that limitation. You can shelf it, sell it, repurpose it, franchise it, license it, you know, all the kinds of things with no lifelong effect on your own personal name. On the other hand, if there's just your name without any other brand name on it, then your game better be 100% tight, right? Because if you get known as Vanilla Ice, now he's the guy with just one real hit, and even that was based on the David Bowie slash Queen hit, Under Pressure. So if you become known as a celebrity that did something wrong or a famous person who isn't that beloved for some reason, that stigma doesn't really go away. It's 2021, and everyone's still kind of making fun of Vanilla Ice from the 80s. It's a joke, and it's not going away. The audience doesn't want it to go away. With your own name as a brand, you run that risk. It's there, and it should be considered. There are three key things to keep in mind when deciding your name. First, words have meanings. Names have power. With personal names, you will always have to be involved, personally, all the time. So if your name, like a salon after yourself, everybody's going to want you to style their hair. Not the other staff working there. Name a food chain after yourself and you're going to be the face of it forever. What happens when you need to disconnect your name from the brand? Look at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They named the foundation after themselves. It could have been Humanitarian Aid or Humanitarian Visions or Love of the World Foundation, Positive Growth Foundation, you know, any name that evokes the right emotion for their foundation's brand community. However, they named the foundation after themselves, swelled the personal power they commanded. The name had power then. But now that the power couple announced their separation, this takes on a whole other meaning. Now every time I say Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, what does it mean to me? They're not together anymore. The two pillars of the foundation are no longer in alignment. Will the name still evoke the same kind of trust? The foundation is about helping people around the world, but they made it about themselves. It was meant to be about the focus and power and intention of a power couple, but then poof, that power couple isn't even a couple. Now, 
they are two separate people and their brand no longer makes sense. It doesn't make perfect sense. It no longer evokes the same emotion. It no longer makes the same promise, which was the promise that Bill and Melinda Gates are capable of solving the world's problems together and they have our back and they will use our, their sizable assets to bring harmony and health and restore balance on a planetary scale. That's a brand promise if I ever heard one, right? But think about it. If they had named it Love the World Foundation or something, even if they were to separate, we'd all still love the world and the work they're doing, right? They would be more like stewards of the brand than the actual pillars of it. A change in stewardship is far easier to traverse as a brand as it grows over generations than a change in the brand, in the brand's promise. A change in the brand's promise breaks trust. Apple's transition after Steve Jobs passed, is on, passed on is a perfect example of this. After all, this is the Apple brand, not the Steve Jobs brand. Sure, it's steeped in Steve Jobs' tales of respect and of ridicule, but it's still Apple keeping the brand promise, not specifically Steve Jobs. The second thing to keep in mind is that personal brands are difficult to sell or license. This follows from the first point. If you name it after yourself and later decide to sell it, the brand's value will lower the moment you walk away. And some celebrities understand this very well. Take George Clooney, for instance. He, along with Randy Gerber and Mike Meldman, created Casa Amigos Tequila. If you don't know Randy Gerber, American entertainment industry businessman and founder of companies like Midnight Oil and the Gerber Group, Hotelier, and, of course, husband of Cindy Crawford, then at least you know the other guy. You know, the funny-looking one, George Clooney. If he is behind a beverage, people are interested. The name is nice, too. Casa means house. Amigo is friends. So you're at the house of friends, and you're offered a tequila. It works. And at one time, I myself came to a party and my friends were like, you've got to try Casa Amigos. And I'm like, oh, I'm not a tequila drinker. I'm a wine or a whiskey girl. And they're like, it's George Clooney's tequila. It's amazing. you got to try it. Oh, in that case, all of my obstacles to try it, like the memory of getting sick on tequila in college, just fly out the window. I have a world mouth-watering advertisement from a trusted friend about a trusted celebrity's taste in tequila. I tried it without hesitation. And persuaded or not, I loved it. He's a cool guy, and you're cool by association. And I'm not even an uber fan of George Clooney, but I will acknowledge that the guy is cool, and if he's in a movie, I'll check it out. If he's made a tequila, I'll check it out. If he's intelligent and smart and successful, and he married them all, an exceedingly smart, intelligent woman, even though he couldn't hold on to her for that long. Getting and keeping are two entirely different things. We all know this. Even so, he has this cachet, and that counts for a lot. In 2017, Casa Amigos was acquired by a multinational beverage company, Diageo, for just a measly, almost, billion dollars. Clooney's cachet certainly worked to give its brand its success and its visibility, but since his name wasn't on the bottle, Diageo found value there. His celebrity brought it up, got us all to try it, but it was good. It is good. But because it was a name George Clooney tequila, it didn't preclude him from that billion dollar deal. Very, very savvy. You should build it as if you were going to have it forever. And yet, at the same time, build it so that you could sell it tomorrow for as much money as possible, even if you don't intend to. This is what product and marketing strategist and my business partner, Camper Bull, says, and it makes so much sense. The third thing to keep in mind is an umbrella brand offers protection in case of a sub-brand like flops or doesn't do as well. Let's take Kanye West. Love him as an example. Like a lot of other celebrities, he's foraying into clothing. Back in 2006, it was a brand called Pastel that Wes felt confident enough to launch with a Grammy under his belt, right? He was a smart decision not to name the line after himself because this was a new venture for him. Maybe he wanted to give himself the space to fail. I don't know whether it was intentional or not. What a lovely thing to do for yourself because we're all human. You know, give yourself a little runway for experimentation and working out the kinks. The Bessel brand was so was discontinued in 20, 2009, so it was just as well. Now we have Yeezy from Kanye West, and hardly anyone remembers Pastel, so it doesn't matter. That was pretty brand smart for a guy as much in love with his own personal name brand as Kanye. Or maybe he had a really clever branding expert or a family of really clever branding experts advising him on how to keep up. 
Gwen Stefani is another celebrity who didn't name her clothing line after herself. She called it Lamb after her first solo album instead of Gwen Stefani, and it worked for her. She could have named it Gwen Stefani and there would be instant recognition, but no, she named it Lamb for a reason and just built it from there. In 2007, Stefani launched a perfume and later in 2016, there was Lamb Eyewear. So you should leave out the personal name from branding exercise altogether. Is that what I'm saying? Can you take a middle path? While you don't have to name the brand after yourself, you can be closely associated and aligned with it. Every time the brand appears, your name appears along with it. So there's that close association. You can speak at launch events, write in business journals about it, do interviews, create videos, much like this one, lend your authority and expertise to your brand. Here you support your brand and lend it credibility. While your brand burnishes your image and creates a greater visibility for you, your brand doesn't cut you off, quite the reverse. When you have an umbrella brand, it actually helps you build your celebrity status. This happens with SEO th and through the pure amount of content that your name is linked with. When you have an umbrella brand, you don't have a limit. There's a lot you can do with it, with no detriment to your own personal name, which is forever. A very good example of this is Lisa Bilio. She is the co-founder of the billion dollar company Quest Nutrition and president of Impact Theory. Her YouTube channel, Women of Impact, currently has 364,000 subscribers and has changed millions of lives. I adore it. Content created by her has been viewed over 100 million times. The net worth of Lisa Bilio and her husband, Tom Bilio, is 400 million as of 2021. At this point, you know, they're just so successful and so wonderful to watch as a branding case study. Lisa is the face of Women of Impact, and her company is helping build her celebrity status, and her celebrity status is lending credibility to her company. Look at all the celebrities who use brand names other than their own names. Will Ferrell founded Funny or Die. Dr. Dre founded Beats Electronics and sold it to Apple for $3 billion. Very savvy. Jessica Alba launched The Honest Company, valued at $2 billion. Cindy Crawford co-founded Meaningful Beauty. Kate Hudson co-founded The Activewear Fabletics. Rihanna and her Fenty Beauty makeup brand, her Savage X Fenty Lingerie brand, has now reached $1 billion valuation. Reese Witherspoon, love her. Her clothing line is called Draper James. Khloe Kardashian has her clothing line, Good American, that saw sales of $1 million on day one of its launch. Jay-Z is like a media czar, but at the center of it all is just a very savvy businessman. Entertainment, cosmetics, wine, stadium, cigars, travel apps, and the list goes on. Let's hit Hollywood. Look at the production houses owned by celebrities. Will Smith, one of the biggest celebrities on the planet right now. His production house, Overbrook Entertainment. Clint Eastwood, Malpaso Productions. Leonardo DiCaprio, Apian Way Productions. Kerry Washington, Simpson Street. Of course, there are some very successful name brands like fashion brands, Calvin Klein, Christian Dior, Giorgio Armani, Martha Stewart is a successful personal name brand and everything she owns has her name on it. But then what happens is that you build yourself instead of an empire, a very long, hard job that never ends because you're always the face of it. You build yourself an ever-ending job. Now, when one is wildly famous, and there's no going back from that, if you're famous, you can't become unfamous, like we said. Once you hit a certain level, it doesn't go away your whole life. Like I said, you might just become the guy or gal who was once famous, but you're never just the guy or gal. You are forever either famous or once famous for something. So this is a commitment, and a very public commitment. Every move is scrutinized, analyzed, and very easily found, imperfect, because who isn't? That is the nature of the beast called fame. Now, as we all watch Martha Stewart build up her brand during her imprisonment and after, it can be done. That's not my point. My point is that it must be done. There is no point during your lifetime where true fame can just be undone. And this is something every entrepreneur must consider when naming their brand. So how do you choose your brand name? I hope you can decide which way you'd like to go in naming your brand. Shortlist some names and then test them. I'm going to give you a free gift to help you on this path. It's called the Blink Test to help you make the right choice. Get this. The Blink Test is the three to five seconds we get where a new potential member of your brand community sees your name, tagline, and logo for the first time. They don't know love or hate you yet. They don't know love or trust you yet. It's just like a blink. And in that blink, they decide to delete or to dive in. And this is branding at its most 
vital stage. So I'm giving you the answer key to this blank test as a gift to get you started right. Check if your name passes the blank test. You can find it in the link in the description below. You want to go for instant impact, instant love, instant decision, emotionality. What is it that you want them to see, to think, to feel, to carry along with them? Try the blink test to find out how your name scores. If you enjoyed this video or found something of value in here, please hit the subscribe button or the bell icon so you get instantly updated as soon as I publish a new episode. Feel free to use them like your own personal masterclass in transforming your brand, making your brand an inspiration to millions. And as always, start from the heart. Love what you do and love how you do it. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe below. And here's something else I think you'll love.